do you have like a strategy, you know, to maybe to kind of identify that something that people listening to this right now, because I, I guarantee you what you just said and what we just talked about is going to resonate with a lot of people. And some of them maybe just have a little eye opening moment. They're like, am I like exhausted? And I, and I don't realize this, like, do you have a strategy um, that you might have for people just to kind of maybe identify that something that they can do to, you know, do early intervention as opposed to sometimes too late? The uh, starting point for me is always awareness mm -hmm. so that if we think about our energy level on our continuum between tired and exhausted, or if we think of a barometer of our energy, almost like a thermostat in a house, where if we get too overheated, the air conditioner kicks on and it cools things down. We pay attention to our own internal signals and really listen to them as opposed to treating them like symptoms. Mm -hmm. And when we can do that early on, we have a chance to say, okay, you know, where is our discomfort? Is it neck tension? Is it stomach aches? Is it this feeling of dread in the morning? Is it feeling so depleted by the end of the day that we're going to bed earlier? So we always have to begin by understanding what our body is telling us and treating it as a message not a symptom to be treated. Mm -hmm. um, and because in this, listen, in this day and age, you know, it, it was exhausting being an educator before the pandemic. When you <laughs> layer in exactly. public scrutiny, the extra workload, the constant threat of health issues, going all, and all of a sudden having to do this virtual learning, it seems like it's sneaking up on a person. But I think the last two or three years has really been a catalyst of exhaustion for people because we were just functioning in crisis mode. We didn't recognize just how much was impacting us all at the same time. So for some people, the awareness is just the tip of the iceberg. The strategy is on what to do about it. That's a whole, you know, right. another set of conversations, but I'll let you react to that first. Well, you know, so like I'm thinking about this because one part I'm struggling with and I, you know, it's very, um, it's very anecdotal. It's my own experience is I, I talk about like, I, I, I really try to eat healthy now. And I think the biggest solve for me when I, you know, started losing weight, getting back into better shape was not exercise. I was always exercising. It was my, my, my eating was really unhealthy and so what I do, and, I, and, and I, maybe this will make sense to you, um, is I typically eat healthy 90% of the week. And then 10% of the week, we'll have a cheat meal of the family, have some pizza, you know, ice cream. We have that. And the day after, I feel terrible. Like it's, it's so, it feels so horrible yeah. when, I, when I eat that unhealthy. Yeah. But the, the problem is, and this is, this is where I'm kind of going with this, what I struggle with is that that was so normal to me that I didn't realize it was an issue.